Welcome back to Tubi, your TV movie entertainment news channel. Today, we are talking about Secret Invasion coming June 21st, and I am super excited about this. So without further ado, let's get into it. Secret Invasions is one of my most like anticipated Disney Plus TV shows for Marvel in a very long time, and this show looks absolutely insane. This video is going to go over who's what character, what's happening, what's the main story, and everything else in between of what could happen in this show. So let's start off with the characters. So we know that our main character for this TV series is going to be Nick Fury, who is the former director of S.H.I.E.L.D., who's been missing since kind of the events of Endgame. Now, we're not exactly sure when he actually took off. We do know between Infinity War, when he was snapped, and from when he came back in Endgame, he was there on Earth. But past that, we really just don't know. We do know one thing that his job as director of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been taken over by Talos, who we're going to get to in a second, but that was revealed in Far From Home. Now for Fury, we know that he is the most wanted person on the planet. He is a fugitive of the state, quoted to us by Rhodey. Now we're not exactly sure why he's considered a fugitive. Maybe there's some beef happening between S.H.I.E.L.D. and their government. And that we do know that around this time, Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross has been the president. So maybe this takes place before Captain America 4, maybe afterwards, during. I'm not sure exactly when, but we do know there's going to be some kind of conflict. Now, we know that Nick Fury has come back to Earth after being away from space for so long to help prevent further invasion on our planet from the Super Scrolls, a character we're also going to get to in just one second. This is, hopefully not, Nick Fury's last ride. This is his last mission that's been saved in the trailers, but I really, really, really hope it's not. I like Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. He does a great job of just being in all the Marvel movies as of this cameo or full character. I mean, really, whenever he's in the scene, he's very present, and I, I don't want to miss this character on the same page as much as I miss Iron Man. But you can't talk about Fury without talking about Maria Hill. Maria Hill is Nick Fury's right hand. Colby Smulders has been playing this character since 2012 when she was introduced in the Avengers, and she's killed it ever since. She has also made animated appearances in the new Moon Girl show, as well as a physical appearance in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. But pretty much what Fury can't get done, she takes over. And she's also been on Earth while Fury has been gone. She's been kind of having to run some things while Fury has been looking for answers. So practically, she's been on her own since the events of Endgame, working with Talos, trying to just figure out what is happening. Now, we don't know much about what else has been going on. They've been really not putting much effort into expanding her character, really only making her, you know, one moment scenes or now with this show, she's going to be more involved, which is good. But I just wish they gave her some more chances to expand on this character because Maria Hill on paper and in comics is so cool, but I don't feel like they're representing that character well, but I hope the show does justice. Previously mentioned earlier, Ben Mendelsohn's Talos is going to be also one of our main protagonists that we have seen in the first Captain Marvel movie, who is one of the scrolls that was anticipated to be the antagonist, but there was a giant twist at the end of that, so if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. We know that Talos is leading a group of refugees that left their planet to potentially find another spot for the scrolls to live on peacefully. But it seems along the way of them trying to find a place to live peacefully, there has been some kind of revolution going on or something that's causing an invasion on Earth from the Super Scrolls. Now, like I also said earlier, his role, Talos, has been recently been taking the place of Nick Fury while he's been in space. Talos has been representing Nick Fury, as well as his wife has been representing Maria Hill. Now, Maria Hill could be doing other things. The real Maria Hill could be doing other things while the fakes are posing as them and they've been communicating like we saw in Far From Home. But past this, they really have not had a chance to expand on these characters and their story. Hopefully we get a better backstory or just a better explanation of what's going on in this show. Because the twist at the end of Far From Home was really surprising. I mean, this felt like this was going to be maybe leading up to Secret Invasion that at the time we didn't really know was happening, but now we do. And it's good that we're actually getting these kind of stories, but we don't know much more, which is what I hope this show does in the first episode. Not as casual remarks, but actually show by the emotion of these characters and the just distraught in them how hard this has been. Talos is working with Nick Fury, like I said, to prevent this invasion from happening. But again, Nick Fury is also just wanting answers. With Talos is his daughter, played by Amelia Clark, Gaia. Now, Gaia, we've been told, has some sort of grudge against Nick Fury for almost abandoning the scrolls after promising to help them. Now, we're still really unclear as to what the events have happened between the two, but we do know that she has some sort of distrust towards Fury, and Nick Fury has distrust towards everyone. So it's this, you know, debacle of who, who doesn't like who. We haven't been given enough information about Amelia 
uh, Clark's character to kind of assume all these different things, but I am assuming that she's going to be working with her dad and hesitant towards S.H.I.E.L.D. that maybe at the end of the show, they're going to work, you know, on that team again. Another cameo in this show is going to be Colonel James Rhodes, who we all know as Rhodey, that's going to be working with Nick Fury over this possible invasion. Now, Rhodey actually seems to be helping Nick Fury, saying like, listen, man, they're out to get you. You're the most wanted man on the planet. You, you've got to figure this out. And I think since Rhodey is also going to be working with the president, like I said earlier, and possibly have some conflict with the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D., which has been LaFontaine, who we have seen in Falcon Winter Soldier, that brief cameo in Black Widow. She's going to be the current director of S.H.I.E.L.D. from what I remember. Now, I'm not, again, certain on what this takes place in. It could be before Black Panther when she's mentioned that she is director of S.H.I.E.L.D., or maybe it's afterwards. We're still not 100% certain, but I'm going to guess it's afterwards. And another character that's going to be making a cameo is Martin Freeman's Everett Ross that we have seen in the Black Panther movies and now including this project. Not exactly sure what he's going to be doing in the show. He always has his fun ability just going up in a scene and then sticking around to the end. But we do know Rhodey's probably going to not be in the show for as long as Nick Fury and Maria Hill, but this may be a chance for him to spin off and do the Armor Wars special presentation from what I remember, but last I also heard it's also a TV show still, so whatever's going to be happening, this may spin off into his Armor War series. Now we know for certain our main villain is going to be Kingsley Benadir's character titled Rebel Scroll, and from the clips we have briefly seen in the trailer, it looks like a super scroll. Now, there is a difference between a scroll and a super scroll. A super scroll is like a scroll where they can shape shift and take on the identity of someone else, but also have that person's ability, that superpower. So I don't know if this may be a stretch, but here we go. Um, that was not a pun when I said stretch. I'm literally meaning this may be a stretch on the idea because in the trailer that we briefly see, you slow it down, it shows that he is extending his hand in a stretching like format. Now, we know that when the scrolls, the super scrolls specifically, encounter a character that has a superpower, they are able to mimic that same ability. You catch what I'm saying? There may be a chance that the Fantastic Four had a past with the super scrolls. Now, I know that is, like I said, a gigantic stretch, but I mean, that's like. It's there. Now we know that the current story between the Fantastic Four right now and their story is that they come from the 60s, they've been traveling the multiverse, and now coming back to our universe. There's a possibility they may have that crossover. Again, not much has been said about this character or even shown, but we do know that they are the Super Scrolls, he's a Rebel Scroll, and this is an invasion that is happening. Now, what is actually happening? I kind of briefly mentioned, but in this moment, I'm just going to do a quick recap. So Nick Fury has been gone in space that we quickly saw in that brief cameo in Far From Home, and now he's back on Earth to prevent the possible invasion of the Super Scrolls and other people from infiltrating other parts of the world. We know that the Super Scrolls are intending some kind of destruction because there's a brief scene where that same character that is the Rebel Scroll clicks this button and an explosion goes off, causing some chaos. Now, the actual reasoning behind why the Super Scrolls are attacking Earth and invading Earth is not 1000% certain, maybe to cause chaos and disorder, maybe to take over the planet, who knows? But one thing is for certain is that Nick Fury is on the hunt to get it done. And right beside him is Maria Hill, who always has his back. Now, I also briefly mentioned that Gaia is having mistrust towards Nick Fury after breaking some promises that he tended to keep. And Talos is trying to help Nick Fury and warn him about the possible threat that is coming. And there's also a brief moment where Gaia is in this really dark room and all around her are these like tables, possibly full of bodies, different bodies in this kind of contraption. Like, I don't know exactly what it is, but it maybe is a possible Cree, you know, hibernation center. There was a brief mention, I believe, in Far From Home about some Cree super centers that maybe the Cree made the super scrolls to take over the planet. And from what I remember about Captain Marvel, the Cree have beef with planet Earth. So maybe this is their way of getting back at us, taking us out completely. This show has a lot of potential to become the best Disney Plus Marvel series Ever. There is so much stuff that can happen in this movie, so many great stories that can happen, and overall, a really good conclusion to Nick Fury's story. Hopefully not, though. I really love this character. June 21st, which is coming around the corner. I'm super excited about this, and I can't wait to talk about it more here on the channel. If you guys want to keep up with what we're talking about, be sure to hit the bell for notifications for when we post. You guys don't miss out, as well as subscribe just to keep up with it. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to like and comment who you think is a actual scroll. I have a very strong suspicion that Maria Hill is 
not exactly who we think she is. I think she's been taken by the Super Scrolls and is using a, another Super Scroll to gain information on what's going on. Because the whole tagline of this whole show is trust no one. Or maybe this is going to be some kind of Indiana Jones last crusade, trust no one. It's a brief throwaway line that comes back at the very end of the show. Hopefully not that last one. I, I really hope there's actually a lot of like confusion in the show. If you guys haven't checked out our podcast, the 2B podcast, we have all current episodes of season two right here on the channel. But if you guys want to check out season one, that is all on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and everywhere else you get podcasts, as well as our current episodes of season two. Thanks again for watching. See you guys next time.